Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we'll be having some fun with VM370 um, and a lot of the things we're going to be talking today apply equally to uh, later versions of VM but uh, because the basics are exactly the same but uh, this is what we are legally allowed to run on our uh, home systems and I do have access to a, uh, to a ZVM version running uh, at, uh, at IBM but uh, very few people have that so that's why I'm focusing on uh, on VM 370 and so today we're going to be looking at how to specifically in how to define and work with virtual machines uh, in VM and um, and uh, what I want to do is we already have a video um, in this channel it's actually quite an old video it's at least a year old where I see I show how to IPL MVS on the VM 370 the only problem with that video is that it works fine. The only problem with that video is that it is a very old version of MVS and there's no RFE installed in it and there is no, um, there is the, all the utilities and the goodies that we use are not, IMON is not installed. And so today what I want to do is uh, make uh, make the system VM370 have a guest machine which IPLs MVS 3.8 as delivered by TK4. Granted, we will be losing some of the features in TK4, such as FTP, because VM370 absolutely does not support TCP IP uh, and some of the other stuff, but we should, and such as the 3705 emulation that I described in M65, the previous video just released about VTAM. But a lot of the other things are useful things to have as a virtual machine on the VM370. And it's a good practicing ground if we one day you will be working with VM, a ZVM on a, on a real mainframe. So let's get started. I have here uh, this VM370, which is a six pack uh, VM370, um, as you can find on, that, uh, on the internet. And um, I'm going to start it with. Uh, so um, actually, we can we could open the Hercules configuration file, so we can look at that briefly. So um, as you can see here, I give it 6 megabytes of uh, RAM. Any more than that is not supported because uh, VM370 is a 24-bit operating system. Um, and then we have um, the uh, VM370 system uh, disks. Uh, and uh, and then later on we have these definitions for the MVS uh, virtual machine with all the with all these files uh, with all these disks. And what I'm thinking, and what I did here is I have a directory with all the with all the uh, TK4 DASDs. And what what I want to do is I want to copy them over. And hopefully we'll be able to have enough of the system copied over here so that we could IPL the system and have most of the stuff that we have in TK4. For instance, um, let's start with the MVS Resident uh, DASD. This one, MVS Res 148. Let's see if we have 148 at all. Yes, we do, and it's called the same. So my thinking here is this is the MVS that I made the video of with about a year ago, which is a very, uh, a very minimum uh, MVS system without all the stuff. And this is TK4. And so my thinking is that if we copy all these DASDs that are named exactly the same over to this TK, to this MVS 370 uh, directory for the MVS sub, uh, virtual machine, then this should just basically just run. So why don't we give this a try? As you can see here, this has a subdirectory called MVS, and there's a DASD file here. And I think what I'll do is I'll just delete all this, and I copy these guys over. And then we we'll see what happens. I mean, I've never done this before. This, I'm, I'm just doing this as we go, like like all my videos. I don't practice this stuff uh, because the learning effect is just uh, most of the value of these videos, really. And uh, let's see how it goes. So I'm in here. So let's start Hercules. Okay, so he sees a lot of the disks. Let's see what else it's complaining about. A 
okay some hard disk errors but it doesn't complain about any disks that it cannot find so I think this is the main oh 150 could not be opened so 150 162 um, where had some problems not found well let's give it a try nonetheless so let's reconnect this terminal and and then I think we need to IPL from W here and by the way VM370 only supports one CPU so there's no point here defining more than one so the IPL came up VM370 version 6 this is I think the very last version of VM370 before it became VMSP um, so this is a good version uh, force drain and we're off to the races QN shows all the all the users logged in so let's start one more such terminal and it's not showing us the login screen because we have to enable so enable all and now we are so this is going to be logon main and I think the password is cpcms okay yeah this worked and now um, we want to look for the direct file the direct is the directory file that contains the definition of all the virtual machines so we do list file direct on all drives mm, okay didn't work list file direct on all drives okay so there is two directory files vm50 and release 6 i don't know what those are so let's look at um, edit vm50 direct a1 for system residence directory to load the locked out areas for areas of, areas of mapping the parks of things mm. yeah here is the password for this installation CPCMS and it's important to understand how virtual machines are defined so both users and operating systems are defined exactly the same way and that's with um, by specifying a director entry which starts with the user the name of the user the password how much minimum memory how much maximum memory and then the class of the virtual machines virtual machines should be BFG and then um, you have console, spoolers, and then either mini disks or you can also work with dedicate. So let's see what where the MBS entry is, if there is one. This looks like MBS. Yes. So here we have the definition for MBS. That's a user. And as you can see, this doesn't show disks as, as M disks, as mini disks. So if you use only part of a real DASTY device, then you can use M disk and define the space on that on the DASTY which you want to make visible to that virtual machine, and you will call it M disk. But if you want to dedicate the whole DASTY, which is often much simpler, then you say dedicate, and then if you say dedicate, the upper, VM370 will step out of the way and MVS will see the full disk and have full control over, over that disk and VM370 will not even deal with that disk at all. It will just step, step out of the way. Uh, kind of like when you have ESXi and you make um, a device directly uh, controlled by the guest virtual machine. Um, so that's kind of the same idea. So we have here a lot of the disks. Why don't we try to IPL this disk? and see what happens okay so we have one we should be able to see here if this machine max uh, let's do uh, pen rate 400 so it doesn't update quite as often pen rate okay 
I don't know if you can see this flicker here, but anyway. So uh, let's connect one more terminal. And then we say L logon MVS. Password is MVS. Oh, a lot of the disks are not visible. Let's try the IPL um, M148. Yeah, that didn't work. So we have, I guess we have to do some work here on defining this directory. Um, so let's put this aside for a second and let's do edit uh, VM50 direct. Oops. Here is so let's go and have a look at all these disks here. We need to match them all here. So zero spool zero zero D. So this editor here for VM37. It's a line editor, really. Um, how do we change this? I have to find out how to change this files. I'll be right back. Okay, folks, after talking to some of the experts on our Discord channel, especially a very special gentleman up in Canada, as well as reading some manuals, I found that the uh, this uh, version of uh, VM370, which is called the, the, the six pack uh, or the five, the five pack uh, version, sorry, uh, doesn't support screen highlighting. And that's why I couldn't find out how to edit uh, the uh, direct directory file because I didn't know on which line I was supposed to insert or delete stuff. So uh, turns out the best way to do this is by doing the following. We will actually punch it to a file. So by doing a punch on technically onto, onto, uh, onto uh, punch cards and then uh, which course in an emulated world becomes a file and then we can edit the file and then we're going to bring it back up again to VM370 by reading those cards from the card reader and that's probably the most elegant way because then we can use our a modern editor on uh, this Windows machine that you see here on your screens and uh, don't have to deal with this uh, almost impossible editor on a VM370. At the same time I want to mention that for 10, 15 years, this, this was how people were editing files on the mainframe. And this was this was already vastly superior than having to do this stuff on paper, writing it on paper, then bring it to 
to the punchers. The punchers would punch you them punch cards. You would get the deck back after a day or so, if you were lucky the same day, bring it to the data center, and then it would be read in through the card reader. The output would be punched out, would be printed out a listing or, or punch cards again. And starting, and this would take forever until you would get your program right. So, uh, I don't want to complain too much because uh, this editor was already a big improvement for a lot of the people. And some of the people um, who witnessed that amazing change from punch cards to this editor and were vastly and, and the, uh, vastly improved the productivity are watching these videos right now and are on the YouTube uh, on the YouTube uh, Moshix mainframe channel. So uh, let's see how to get this done. To punch to uh, to punch cards, you go to the console of the, the operated console of VM uh, 37 or ZOS, and you say start all. Uh, once you start, you see all the spool devices we have, and one in particular is a punch card uh, device, and it's class P, and that's the one here, uh, 000D. As you can see here, it's active and highlighted, and so we're going to be um, using this device here to uh, to punch our directory files so we can get a file out of it, edit it, and then read it back again. So to do that, uh, as you can see, I already tried it before. Once you have the uh, spool activated, you just say spool punch uh, class P, so that he knows you're punching to class P, and then you say punch VM50 direct no hold. So it doesn't hold until you log out, it actually immediately punches it. Uh, if you do that, and then we go to our uh, the, our MVS3, uh, MV, uh, VM370, we go to this directory, and we have this output so you copy it without because we can change this directory immediately uh, this file immediately because then it would interfere with uh, Hercules reading and writing to it and it will confuse Hercules so that all we can do is just copy it um, and then putting it aside and then I open um, a new file here on my standard editor which on Windows is Notepad++ and here we have the output and this is what we need to change now especially this bad boy here uh, the MVS user entry directory and as I was saying before user this is how you've defined a virtual machine or a real human user by saying user and then the name the password the minimum maximum uh, RAM or memory or storage and to be attached to it and so here's the first change we would make it BFG uh, EC mode virtual equals real and that's a mode to make things a little faster on uh, on VM 370 that, that so that the pay, the system is not actually paged but we're going to um, comment this out for now because I don't want to get into uh, memory or in mainframe power parlance sh uh, storage shortage so we let remove that I also want to remove the IPL comment and then we're going to be using this printer, 1403 40, printer. And um, all these devices I don't really need. I don't do much tape on Windows, only when I need, and I can easily change it again. And so now we're going to have to dedicate all the drives that, that uh, belong to this uh, virtual machine. First of all, let's give it some um, 3270 screens here. I like to put them right after this pool, and I like to call them. How did we? Um, yeah, I think we're gonna call them special 700, 3270 special. No, actually, they were called this way, so no, I'm doing something else. So we make it like this and this. Of course, we have to delete the whole line here. Yeah, and now let's start with the drives that we see here. Um, we actually should go get. Um, the downloaded downloads TK4 okay 
this is a full TK4 and actually um, just to be on the safe side I'm going to delete this all this again because I think this was update 7 mm, it's not going to work right now we're going to do it later the names of the of the DAS devices are the same between update 7 and update 8 we can just do it the next time we shut down BM370 but what I do want to get is um, where is it here the configuration file conf let's do it like this open where did it go Well, where did you go? Here it is. Okay. All right, here are all the disks. So that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to copy all this and put it all here. First of all, Okay, then the problem is going to be that um, MVS knows about 3380s and 3390 disks, but mm, VM370 doesn't. So, but that doesn't matter because we dedicate them. If we made them first visible to um, to VM370 then it wouldn't work so let's put this back here and we have to say for each one of those lines we delete this and we have to write dedicate This is how this has to look for all these devices. So since this is going to be a little boring, I'll just do it and stop the video so I don't, I don't bore you to death. Or I, what I could do is just I do it and then I make this part a little, a little faster so that it's actually fun for you to look at. Okay, folks so uh, so we got this done and uh, hope you enjoyed the music and so some of you may ask why do you have to repeat it twice because sometimes you may have a conflict between what it needs to be called in the physical world remember the Hercules emulates the physical world and 
and what it needs to be inside the virtual machine. So sometimes you would you may have a conflict with what the name that the operating system inside the virtual machine expects because that may already be taken, let's say, by another operating system having very similar uh, device names. And so you would hear, then you could change the device names to something that doesn't conflict and internally then give it the same device name that the operating system expects. So that's why you have it twice. Let's say I already have another MVS, then I could just say here, you know, I will call it maybe let's say two. All this I will call them two, and then inside I will still call them two one five two in the physical world, and then in the virtual world zero one five two, so that operating system still comes up and finds the devices where it, think, it thinks they are. That's a very neat way, um, and that's something that ESXi to this ESXi if, uh, from VMware still doesn't have to this world. Another does another does KVM or Zen. Uh, that's just because mainframe people are just awesome. All right, so we got this done. Uh, we may want to put in here an asterisk. All righty, so this should work now. Uh, we could actually uncomment the tape drive for AD, and we have several sc screens now. Maybe we do one more just to be on the safe side. Okay. So we call this five. Okay, so this is done. Um, I don't see why this shouldn't work. Let's give it a try. And the IPL will combat it out so that we actually have to IPL it by hand. And that's fine. Uh, yeah, this class, class A, that's fine. So let's give this a try, and I just saved it already. As uh, where did I save it? It don't matter. Um, I have saved it somewhere here on the desktop. So now, how do we bring this back? So the way to bring this back is to um, go to the file that we just saved. I think I put it here somewhere. Yeah. Okay. And then we delete this couple of lines here. And we have to bring, because we're going to be re reading this for the card reader, the card reader and VM370, when it comes in, needs to know to which user this belongs. And so, um, now we're going to have to say um, user ID named class P name V50 direct. Okay, actually, this should be all in uppercase. So, user ID named class P name V50 direct. So, that's what we're going to put in. Um, And this will tell VM370 when, it, when it's being read in that this is for user main, it's class P, and the name is VM50 direct. So if we now read this file in, it should, in theory, go straight to VM to my uh, user here. So let's give this a try. We switch here. And we say device in it, 00C. And we say um, what is it called? VM50 direct, VM50. Okay, let's give this a try. Let's read it in. Oh, we should say end of file at the end. So let's give this a try. Oops. Where is my reader? Ooh, we have a problem. We don't have a reader here. So we'll have to shut this down and give this a reader so that we can work with it. So let's log off here 
in the meantime. Shut down. Okay. Okay, let's see what's wrong here with the configuration file. We use this configuration file. So of course we also have to replace this part here. Very, very important with ah, this here. So we're going to take this and just to get in the safe side. All the VM MBS stuff we're going to replace with this now. Yeah. So then, and where is the reader? Oh, something wrong here, VM. VM reader dummy EOF. Try this. Um, the only other thing we need to do is move this dusty file. Here. So now we have the TK4 MVS in there. This should in theory work, so let's give this a try again. Yes, it found all the MBS files, that's very, very good. And now we have to IPL from uh, this MV from VM370. Yes, and it's coming back up. Oops, no, it's not. Fast only got to reconnect the terminals. Nope. Okay, we've got it up. Don't change the clock. Force and drain. Okay, we have the reader now here. And enable all, start all. And we should see now the card reader. Yes. So let's try this again device in it let's go to directory let's go to the VM and the file oh we need to give it the, of course the device name okay so let's go in, paint, cpms, 
press enter again after logging in and ID card missing or invalid. So no, this is still the old directory entry and that's because ID card was missing. So let's go read the manual. So we say um, card reader Z -M. Uh, ID card missing or invalid. I did something wrong there. There's not many card readers left in the CVM world. Let's see what this says. Let me see here. Reading by So I don't understand. So I am confusion. I don't know if you saw this video where a woman says I'm confusion about Kansas was called Kansas, but Arkansas is not called Arkansas. Uh, uh, user ID maint class P name BM50 direct. Oh, let's do like this, yeah. All this is not only, this is the only stuff. Okay, let's save it. Okay, I have to do it. Like this, user main. Yes. Well, let's create a new file then. New text document. Put it in there. I don't like Windows much. Okay, now let's try this again. And we're gonna call it VM60. Okay. Input for main, yes. So now something came in, and let's close this for the meantime. And now all we have to do is um, the file came in called file 25. So that you need to know this file number. So we're going to say um, the reader file 025. No, we're going to call it read card pushix direct why is this not working try 
this again. Yeah, okay, folks, I figured it out. What it was is that some of the records were longer than 80 because of when I inserted stuff, it moved records slightly, like two bytes here, like in this situation here to the right. And that makes a card uh, 82 bytes long in this case. And um, even small children know that a punch card can be more than 80 characters, 80 bytes long. And so, of course, it wouldn't accept it. But uh, once I fixed that, it actually read the the cards in and you can see here I got the message that the uh, file has been read and so once we have that um, what we do is we just type in read card uh, we set kite type it call it motions direct and so that's done and this by the way I also got advice from this very special uh, gentleman up in uh, up in Canada who's uh, who knows quite a bit about VM and has been helping with me, uh, helping me with this thing. So now that we've read it in, let's look at it. Motion direct, um, and let's go all the way to the. Ooh, there's some ugliness here. What happened? It read it in, but everything after MBS got ugly, very ugly. So let's see why is that. Uh, as you can see here, this part got totally ugly. Now I guess what we need to do here is just delete all these lines. If I had V V I, I could do this very very simply. Um, but we don't have V I. There's V I for Windows, but it's ugly. Um, I have to delete all these lines. I think that's what's causing this problems. I'm gonna get this done and then need is it possible that this stuff threw off the stuff here is it possible oh I know what this is I know what this is uh, this added Windows control feed and line uh, carriage return and line feed and mainframes don't like that and so I think what I should do is just go to um, this part here and just create a new file and just say to remove uh, there's an there's a way here to remove end-of-line conversion Unix yeah so let's do this Unix style and then we just try this again and we save this as on my desktop as VM50 version 3 we call it Moshe's direct okay so let's try it again so let's get out of here first and let's do this again A new file has been read, and now we'll type in read card Moshix direct and then edit Moshix direct. Oops. So let's do it. Hmm. Why is this edit Moshix direct? Ah, here it is. Again. But maybe it just didn't replace it, so let's just do read card. Moshix to direct. Or maybe I have to upload it again. Read card Moshix 3 direct. Edit Moshix 3 direct. Yes, so that was it. The It didn't like Windows style line termination. And luckily, uh, my trusty Notepad Plus here 
has an option to convert it because everybody knows the idiocy of Windows line termination. Okay, so we got this done now. Um, let's look at the MVS. Yes, it's all here. So now we just have to um, uh, make this the, the valid directory entry. And again, list file mushix three direct. You can see it's this one that we need to use. So we'll do, um, we'll just do a direct. This is the, the command, uh, privilege command to create a directory entry. Uh, we'll call it mushix three direct. Oh, dedicate. It didn't like that. Why not? Oh, I know why. Because uh, in S3 Senior Architecture, unit names are only three bytes long, not four, and I used S390 notation. So, um, back to square one, nothing major. So, we go back to my favorite file, and we have to delete a zero from all this. Let's just do this very quickly. And again on this side. So it helps to have some knowledge of the history of mainframes. In fact, I would say it's almost required uh, to make these things work. Um, so let's try this again. And a file has been read. This time we call it read card mushix4 direct. Okay, edit mushix4 direct. And bottom. And then we go up. Yes, this came through clear and nice. So we get out of here and now we say direct mushix4 direct. invalid file name or file not found. Direct Moshix4. Oh, I have a speller here. Direct. Perfect. So now that we got this done, we should be able in theory to IPL uh, Jurgen's amazing TK4 update 8. So let's log in here as MVS, I think, is the user. Password MVS in this case. And now, we say term terminal con mode 3270 uh, term break key pf12 well those are commands that exist in later versions of vm so unfortunately we probably won't be able um, to easily switch terminal out but there's another way to do it so uh, f f disregard everything here that that happened here um, just to make it very clear Let's log off and then log in as MVS. MVS again is the password. And now I say IPL or eight. But to be sure, um, let's go read the manual. ETH TK4 MVS. And there is a way to IPL it manually without the automation. And that's a slightly different procedure to IPL it this way. So let's see what it what it tells us here. Seems the website is down. Oh, here it is. It's just a little slow. Hope you're having a nice evening. Uh, it's Sunday he evening here in the US of May the 20th. Wow, time flies. We're almost in June. Why is this website so slow sometimes? I suspect it has something to do with IPv6. My supplier here, my internet supplier is on IPv6 and IPv4 is just tunneled over IPv6. Um, let's look at the IPL options here. System consoles. Unattended operations. 
Okay, so manual operations. This is what we're looking for. We need to IP on from console number 148, from uh, device 148, so let's do that. Ooh, that's nasty. Why is that? IPL 148, stop. Oh, because it needs a console, yeah. So, um, so right now, I, MVS wants to come up, but it doesn't have a place to write to. So we need to start a new session here. And we're gonna say, uh, dial MVS. So we dial into MVS. We're not, we don't log in, we just dial into it. And now we say, like, yeah. Uh, let's try this again. Uh, log on MVS, MVS. At this point, we don't continue with the IPL. We do here dial MVS, and then we say IPL 148. Uh, yeah, that's why it kicks it out again when we IPL. That's why we have to say IPL 148 stop. So, okay, let's do this again. L MVS. IPL1 oh, password. Okay, so we say IPL148 stop. And now we dial into MVS. And now we say continue. And it's not working. Let's look at this wait state here 34, it looks familiar. Wait state. Let's look for this. What is the meaning of this wait state? Uh, yes, I'm relatively new to Hercules and MVM, but we're doing it anyway. Similar setup here. Yeah, it doesn't find the console. So let's try one more. Uh, MVS. 009. Yeah, it expects a console at 0010. That may be it. Um, begin. Nope. So we may have a problem here with the console definition. Um, let's look here at. Um, Console definition is that console would be at mm. these are all non consoles. What does the manual say? at 0, 010 so that's where we need a console let's see what we have defined here as console yeah that's the problem we need a console at 10 so we need to say here um, console I think that's the way to do it Yeah, that's the that's the way we're gonna do this. Um, 
an IBM 3270 at 10. Yeah, here it is exactly. And and then we have console 01F as a 3215, as you can see here clearly. Okay, so it's missing a console. It's missing this one and this one. So what we're going to do is rerun this. And so let's log off here. So I guess we can close this one. And we can also close this one. We don't need this for now. Let's go back here. And now let's reread this in. Okay, reader file 003 has been read. Okay, so now we say read card Moshix. Um, what was it we had before? Five, so we call it Moshix 6 direct. Let's see what came out. Edit Moshix 6 direct. Let's look at the Yes, we got the consoles that we have defined or have been read in. So now we just have to say Moshix 6 direct, make this a directory entry. 3270 has a problem with that. What's the problem with that? Oh, it only accepts 32. Yeah, 3270 uh, is not accepted as a console. So we have to remove this. So in his eternal wisdom, Jurgen, the uh, maintainer of TK4, that's why he supplied two consoles, uh, 132.15 and 132.70, because he knew that some people are going to run in this on the VM, and VM only knows 32.15 consoles at this in this very late, uh, in this very old uh, MBS370, but still very capable. So um, we'll just try this again, and we call it, okay, so we say read card, Mushix 7 direct and let's go check it out just to be on the safe side I'm sorry I'm dragging you through all this but I guess we're all learning something from my mistakes so it, maybe in the end it is interesting yes so we got the console defined here very good direct Mushix 7 direct to make this a directory entry and now we go in here L login as MBS with the password MBS. Uh, at this point uh, we can dial in here and uh, see uh, IPL 148 stop dial MBS and now we say continue and still the same wait state. Why is that not working? Let's see again what it says here. Well, I guess we should make device 10 then just a... Yes. Yeah. Let's try this. Um, let's open this again and let's make a console, let's dedicate a console. Let's make sure we save this, edit and we'll make this a Unix, yes. Okay, so we log out of the MBS virtual machine, close this, this is already logged out. So we read this again. And file 34 has been read. Read card, read card, Moshix 8, direct. Let's trust it that it did it right. Direct, Moshix 8, direct. Okay. Then we log in here, log in as MBS, password MBS not defined device 010 not available um, oh yeah oh 
Oh, I see the problem. We are using device, this is device 10. The operator console for a VM is device 10. Uh, what does the manual say? Yeah, it is definitely a console problem. Uh, how do we fix this? Um, Console zero one F. Uh, let me think here for a while. This it's not seeing this console. And we cannot have a console as a thirty two seventy. Um See here. Let's see what it says, tells us here. There must be command to deal with all this. Mode VM Terminal Mode VM back to direct motion seven direct and log off log on MVS MVS so, um, This all this terminals here. We would have to log in with a value of con. But it's not letting us. to the researchers a little bit folks okay folks I think I got it so uh, just a minute after I paused this so uh, I saw that in in uh, the original direct directory file um, there was uh, no console so I removed the console definition from that and I put back virtual equal, virtual equals real so it's uh, no virtual memory and let's see if this uh, works. And then I give it a console 011 like it had in the original BM50 directory file, uh, skipping 10. 
so let's see if we can get this to run um, so okay that's uh, so a read card more six nine better um, actually let's do erase more six direct and then read card more six direct direct more six direct okay so let's log on to MVS MVS okay so it says storage equals real let's open a couple of consoles and let's say uh, let's open a few more make this a little smaller so we can see them all okay and then one more and so um, then we say I kill 140 stop and let's start dialing in into MBS uh, MBS this is 11 that should be in theory a console and then we say B for begin or continue the, oh no wait state seems to be doing something here oh yeah oh yeah so we have an MBS console so we say here the manual says for um, manual IPL manual manual operations okay so I think it's a little smaller I think we're almost there could it be um, so we say R zero zero say command equals zero three and MVS is coming up slowly but hard specify hard copy and I've had this before specify hard copy um, there is a special command we have to put in here there is yeah yes so Hard copy equals very e all commands. Hmm. R hard copy copy equals syslog all commands. Yes. Oh, Jurgen Wing command. Yes, it's coming up. Okay, what does the manual say? The system waits for thirty seconds. So let's see what has come up so far. Nothing. So it waits 30 seconds. Let's see if this continues to come up. It will be the first time I'm able to up, uh, IPL TK4 update 8 under MVS. It will be amazing. Um, let's see if this is a if this this is a problem of. Uh, IPL in manual mode or if we need to start all the subsystem by hand that's what I'm thinking it's gonna happen yeah so we have to so let's start with start just two. ok 
Okay. No request, zero no request. We are back in familiar territory. Yes. Stuff is starting to happen. Just two is up. Yes, we have just two up. What else do we need? Um, let's bring up. Um, Tam. Always let's bring up TCAM. Terminated. Um, so we got this black boy already running. The one that I always kill first is now one of the first systems to come up. How do I start? Um, Start BSP pilot. Let's see what's happening. Okay. Some stuff is happening. TCAS is up. TSO is up. So what's going on here? Why are we not able to log in yet? So we should be able to log in. Okay. It doesn't find the 3705 which TK4 emulates. So I think that's a lot of the problems are related to that, which we could disable in uh, in the start procedure. Once we have TSO, we could start to do things. Oh, even though we don't really need TSO, we could go through the card reader because we define the card reader. So we could still get uh, stuff to run inside this MVS. Okay. It's, it believes it has completed initialization, even though we know it hasn't. Okay, and especially we don't get any terminal. Oh, yes. So, card zero one. I'll see you later. And yes, we are in. We are in. So now we could. Yes, it's a it's an ancient terminal, but uh, still works. So let's see. Yes, so we have a full TK4 running. TK4 update 8 under MVS, uh, under VM37. So we got it done. Now we would have to disable a lot of the stuff that has to do with the 37 IBM 3705 communications controller emulation that Jurgen put in. Uh, a lot of the VTAM needs to be rewired. But we have a full uh, MVS uh, TK4 update 8 running, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go first of all run a job and um, being a PL1 man, let's get this done first. Oh, that's a serious storm outside. Let's put it in message class page. Do you hear the thunders? There is a passage in the Bible when Moses um, went up to get uh, the, what is it called, the Bible from God, the Ten Commandments from God, it is said that the people of Israel stayed behind and the Israelites stayed behind because they were not allowed to go up with Moses to the, mount, to the mountain and only Moses was up there. But when God gave the, the commandments to Moses, uh, it is said that uh, they heard the lightnings and they saw the thunders. If you go read in the Bible, uh, that's how it's written. Um, and what it, some interpretation of that is that people were so confused by sensory overload, uh, by being in the presence, in the divine presence, that Moses was getting uh, the commandments that they saw the thunders and they heard the lightnings. Uh, just as a side. Okay, so we got this done. Um, let's run this. Job 001. <laughs> how fitting. And... It is somewhat slower than running on a pure system, but that was to be expected. Um, yeah, it's complaining about the printer. So let's stop MF1. 
Okay, um, and let's look at the job output. And here it is in all its glory, PL1 program and prime numbers. So we got this licked. Um, now we would have to go into uh, sys1 parmlib and edit here all the commands to bring a system up um, so that it wouldn't start some of the stuff that's unrelated here because 3705 obviously is not available here in the system. Uh, but that's simple enough to do. I don't, I don't think we should be wasting any time explaining that. Uh, everybody knows how to do that. Um, but I'm very happy. I have my MVS 3.8 TK4 Update 8 up and running under VM370 in all its glory. Uh, it took us a while, but um, we got it done. What I'll do is I will post the um, this member here. Uh, this file, sorry, we're on the VM, the, the directory file um, on uh, on my GitHub, and I will also make it available on the uh, MVS uh, uh, on uh, the cloud MVS that I run for people who want to have a login, so that they can also go and uh, download it from there. Uh, because I, you know, it's fitting because it's it. This all was about running MVS, so I will upload it on I will upload it on my cloud MVS. Um, I will call it, there's a YouTube um, um, high level qualifier PDS there and I will put it in there for those people who have an account on the Cloud MVS. If you don't have an account, please send an email asking for an account with, you, with your real name and uh, what you want to do and uh, uh, suggested login and password and I will give you one and then you can also go download from there or I'll also put it on GitHub for those of you who don't want uh, an account in on my cloud MBS. So this is it. Uh, we got something accomplished. I'm very glad of that. I've never got so far before. I actually also never tried, but we got it done together. Thank you for all your help. I hope you have a nice evening and uh, a great start to the new week. Thank you very much and goodbye.